Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to the Procurement Games Podcast and Open Conversations, where we post the question, is the field ever leveled in our favor? Of course, we are talking about procurement and contracting of minority, women, and veteran-owned small businesses deemed to be the underutilized firms in government and private corporation contracting. So, my name is Arlen Pingle, and I am a proud Filipina-American entrepreneur. I lead Mackey Company, a strategic consulting organization focused on procurement supply chain management. We basically help government agencies and private companies design race, ethnic, and gender-conscious contract policies and procedures. More importantly, we help folks like you build capacity, capability, and sustainability. We hope that with the stories we share of entrepreneurs like yourself, that you learn a thing or two to help you strategize for the win. Each week, we feature a minority, veteran, or women-owned small business. And once a month, we feature a trailblazer who is paving the way to help move us forward in this ever-challenging and changing world of procurement. You know, I am so excited to have this special guest here today, the CEO and executive producer of Soul Touch Productions. I'm really, really thrilled to have Miss Robin Hickman Winfield in our studios today. Miss Robin, Lynn, I am so delighted to have you here. Lynn, it's like we have known each other forever, but it's only been less than a year. You talk about divine connection of dots. Absolutely, absolutely. And you know, one of the things that I talk about here is relationships, networking, connections. You yourself have had an amazing journey in life, in career, and even in your activism. Right. I'm really excited to get to know you and how you came to be Miss Robin Minwinfield. And I want to talk a little bit about Soul Touch Productions. Coming from um, being a descendant of Rondo and um, the, the tragedy of seeing the attempts to destroy a people by taking away their homes and their businesses. There's a very powerful um, Mexican proverb that says they thought they buried us but didn't know we were seeds. Mm -hmm. When I was giving remarks at a there was an event where politicians apologized for the destruction of Rondo, and I lifted that proverb up because as a daughter of Selby Dale community, they thought they buried us, but we were seeds. We were rooted on Selby, the Selby Dale Summit University community. So I was a, a child that grew up saying, yes, our commerce survived. Our cultural centers survived. We got to see, walk down Selby and see our commerce and, and see people in our, in our community still build community organizations and again, businesses. And so we got to see that so we knew we could be that. And so my father with his cultural organization, again, women in the community, men in the community, um, building businesses. So I always knew that, yes, the activism side of my, my family, they were they were social activists. And I, but also the business side. I also knew I wanted to be a social entrepreneur, a media maker that was in my blood as well. And so I kind of pulled it all together and, you know, had that vision and made it happen. The work I do with young people today, you know, instilling in them, you are visionary. You know, and I am a vision of possibilities for you. So I, I had those visions of possibilities growing up. Our connection comes, uh, was, was made in this, this whole movement for the revival of the power of Rondo, and that's how we connected in a Zoom. I think I saw your spirit light, and then, you know, we just kind of came together deeper. And you know what's amazing when I hear how you were indoctrined mm -hmm. into the system that has been supportive of entrepreneurs and communities of color, and seeing the devastation that happened in the Rondo community gave you character and gave you one of the strongest voices in the Rondo community. I know you speak highly and often about your father and how much of an inspiration he was and he continues to be. You know, my father, my family, my grandmother, Lillian Parks Thomas, and my family in Rondo, my father, Bobby Hickman, and my aunts and uncles, and, and the larger community village because it truly, truly was. And I think the forces that were destructive all over the country through freeways and urban development, that took place all all over the country. But in Rondo, you know, pretty, pretty sad. But my father, again, 
being a social activist, started the Inner City Youth League. But also my mother and me as a fifth generation Minnesotan, <laughs> um, my mother was born in Fergus Falls, Minnesota, with her bro- her six brothers. And so there's deep root activism and deep root Minnesotan there. And my mother was just as much of an activist, Patricia Frazier. And so with her spirit and her courage combined with my father, it was, it was some pretty mighty the stuff force going to be on. Reckoned the force with. to be reckoned with. I'm dying love for black people, undying love for history, again, a village. And that is what the Rondo community was about, the Selby Dale community was about, the village that raised us. And so that was just the community that we grew up in and nurtured and and were very intentional about ensuring that we had visions of being business women and businessmen. That's what's resounding. That's what's amazing, especially with the story of Rondo. What was your inspiration for Soul Touch? What was your inspiration to be Robin Hickman? My inspiration to be Robin Hickman. You are going just too deep. <laughs> You know, it's and, and for me, it's so it's so. This is still something that's not comfortable for me to be on this side of the microphone because I am a media maker. I was inspired at a young age. I was inspired at a young age, being. Again, my father's health, we see he does social activism, but also by way, we come by it naturally. I am the great niece of Gordon Parks, who was the first black photographer for Life magazine and Vogue magazine, one of the co-founders of Essence magazine. He was the first black director in Hollywood with his film adaptation of his autobiography, The Learning Tree. The director of Shaft did many, many things, author, composer, you know, renaissance man. But I fell in love with my uncle as a little girl. And I watched what he did growing up. And I was like, I want to be like Uncle Gordon. So I walked in his footsteps and had a love. So he not only inspired what I grew up to do for a living, but how to do it. And so he was my uncle, but he was my mentor. And I just wanted to do what he did. And so I fell in love with the power of me media at a young age and media making at a young age. So my father co-founded with others in the community the Inner City Youth League, Mm -hmm. which cultural arts center in our community. So as young black people in our community, we experienced the arts and media and history and social activism. Um, Many of our mentors in the community and the elders and others and educators as young people, we had everything we needed to explore, explore theater and visual arts and all of that. Also, um, when I was young, public television was at a time when the Kerner Commission um, did a report. It was during the riots, and, and there were many studies that looked at what is what is going on, what is what's happening right now. And so the Kerner Commission looked at issues like media, how are people of color looked at and covered in the media and looked at that as one of the issues or one of the the forces that contributed to the riots and looking at, well, how are they depicted in the media and are they represented? How are they represented? And are they employed in the industry? Are they having opportunities to create their own narratives? And so through that that research and that study, um, one of the outcomes was that public television be a vehicle to work with communities to create uh, programming and the influences that you have in media obviously wow with mr gordon parks right mm-hmm. that relation and that connection there is a, a series or a movie that's going to come out can you tell me a little bit about that so our listeners also know right and it the second hbo documentary on the life of my uncle gordon it's it's titled a choice of weapons inspired by gordon Parks. a choice of weapons was his second autobiography which chronicles his life in minnesota let's look at the weapons that my uncle chose to combat racism and poverty and violence. Choosing weapons, the camera and, and music, art. Coming back to entrepreneurship, we have Soul Touch Productions. We have a gorgeous framework of a doll 
because this is Miss Robin's new venture. Mm-hmm. And so tell me a little bit about both of those as an entrepreneur and, and your journey. What's been what's been successful? What's been yucky? What, what, t- okay. Tell us about all that. Because I've just become so close to you. <laughs> <laughs> Did not know anything about how to start a business, try to take a couple classes and whatnot. But still this day, I probably don't have the proper business plan. <laughs> but you kind of just leap out there and do it. I always knew it wouldn't be just media production. It would be PR, public relations. I had so many things under my belt to put into Soul Touch. But I said I also wanted to set up Soul Touch so that there would be a kind of like a, a foundation, a philanthropic arm to it as well. So I like to think that the work that we've been able to do over the years with communities set the stage for this historic moment. Taking our place center stage is some of the work under that umbrella of soul touch, of working with organizations and many organizations. So let's, you know, diversity, equity, inclusion, uh, ah, yeah. you know, that work. I like to um, walk in the spirit of James Baldwin, who says, uh, it's time for lovers of humanity to find one another. So I don't so much use DEI anymore. Let's just do the humanity work. Really, that's what it really needs to be about. But I like to lift that up, again, as an example, that my unique business it's all business, yeah. but it's the business of touching souls. And that's your unique identifier, right? Because there's production companies all over. There's nothing any different there. But when it does not have heart, it doesn't connect. I love it. I call the shot so I can determine, okay, if I curate this exhibit, then I can make the decision that my scholars at Gordon Parks High School will be my co-curators. I want to talk about the dolls. Oh. This is an expansion, and the dolls have a story. You know, we we talk about entrepreneurship and we want to open all sorts of businesses. We want to be solutions provider. The next organization has to have some type of connection to the existing organization. It's a celebration of Soulful Dolls and it's like my 30 year journey. Restyled little spirits of fashion dolls. I got so into it but the story, the narrative was about how this new hobby kind of helped save me. Yeah. I brought a friend's a camera and I would take photos and but it really was a journey of healing and one of the stories I wrote for the Robin doll because I customized the doll was about getting back into media production and wow. maybe working back at pu- making rent, getting a job at public television so I don't know it was really strange it was crazy but guess what? I became an executive producer. <laughs> it was you made really, the, door, the doll made story happen. real. It made, it, it, made right? it happen. But then many s- stories. And, I mean, it's just that was that was the beginning. Tied it to the social relevance and the importance of girls and co- of color. Blessed to be commissioned by In Black Inc., which is a publishing arts organization. It's all about the narratives of black people and our our ownership of our narratives and our stories, an amazing organization. And they, for me to create a celebration honoring the elders and our ancestors. Robin's information is gonna be on procurementgames.org. And so I'm gonna encourage all of our listeners to connect with her. The work itself, again, I'm, I'm looking at it here in the studio is amazing. And the stories of the soulful dolls is a story of passion, a story of life journey. If I may share even, because I would love people to experience my art through social media, I'm on Facebook, and it's a celebration of soulful dolls on soulful dolls on Instagram. And I do most of my sharing there. Let's talk about what in your journey didn't work in the industry. So... How did you overcome? Well, well, you know, what were your challenges as a black woman and, and how can we fix it? Because being more intentional and purposeful in including us, not just in entrepreneurship or workforce, but just in overall lenses. You talked earlier about worth. One of my mother's powerful pearls of wisdom. Be humble, but know your worth on her memorial stone beautiful images of her and the words, take your rightful place in the world. I'm not going to just do programming to take care of mine. I'm going to be a woman of humanity. I'm going to walk in what James Baldwin says. Where when we refuse to be put in boxes, that's, the, that's what's been challenging, walking in being a Minnesotan, being about humanity. Well, and one of the things that we think about, you talk about that box, right? 
Mm -hmm. The system is insistent on putting us in a box. I was doing love the Skin on Men film project, and I went out and met one of the most powerful producing teams in the business. And they were interested in, in, in the project. So I met with them, and it was an honor. Uh, one of them said, now, Robin, you know, you, 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 you are passionate, and this is a great project, but we, 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 we about making money. You have got to learn, understand. We love what you do with the girls and everything, but when you make money, you have the resources to do the next brilliant That's production right. vision you have. When they broke that down, and if you knew who they were, Ooh, I was blessed to be in that restaurant in L.A. with them. Nice. You know what I'm saying? And that stuck. So what would you say to all our listeners about structure and business and monetizing and everything? I now recognize the things that I need to put in place for so many years. I shouldn't be here. I took on everything. Sure. And that's the thing about entrepreneurship. We take it all on and hope that we can execute it all when and not realize we need structure. But as a social entrepreneur, what would I do differently? I would have mentors like you to teach me to do it in a way so that I don't run the risk of possibly not being healthy, so that I don't do the consulting DEI work in a way where I have to walk with people who feel like my presence is a threat to their relevance. I just like being a businesswoman, but being able to we uniquely, <laughs> yeah. you, you, to be able to uniquely position yourselves and just again, um, present, uh, just redefine what a business can be, that you have the resources. I have a philanthropist spirit, but the bank account does not reflect that. That's been one of the challenges. That, But I should have taken on some more mentorship. We are so passionate about mm -hmm. what we do. Driven to do right. Mm -hmm. to, to help, that sometimes we lose sight that it is a business. It's a business. It is a business, and while the intention, the resources are good, there's a value. In social entrepreneurship, we forget our value. The inspiration to creating Soul Touch Productions to bring the desire to get our youth into the arts, to get our youth into media, to pick the right weapon Mm -hmm. Whether it's a camera or mm -hmm. a video or what have you, there's other tools there. And that resonates, right? That's shifting the mindset. I love the stories because there's always an uplift. It's not a negative story. The, the journey may have been a hardship, a, a, a devastation and, and such, but there is an uplift to every, everything that you say. And there is a tenaciousness mm -hmm. that, that I love because it's like, this is what we need to do. This is what we should do. I mean, I have a slew of questions here that, you know, what have you done? You know, where have you gone? How have you helped community? And I don't even have to ask that because in every story that you share, mm -hmm. you answer every single one of them. You did not know me, what do they say, from a can of pain. <laughs> yes, that's right. That's but right. no one can tell me that you are not my, my soul sister. Sure, sure. That's what we have, we, we must do yeah. each one reach one and lift one another up and what i love about our conversation is you always look to self you always mm -hmm. look to values you always look to what mom and dad instilled in you and said you must prevail and this is how whatever that looks like you figure it out in your generation in your time in your technology mm -hmm. but always remember and stay true to you and that, to me, is what resonates every time I hear you speak mm. about your journey as a social media guru and your dolls. And at the end of the day, your message, Robin, mm. is we're going to uplift each other. That's right. Have to. And we are going to find a way to succeed together because that's how we're going to lift the village. That's right. You know, this podcast is about procurement. It is about equality. It is about how do we get ours, right? In our conversation today, if we follow those principles, we're going to get ours. We're going to get it. We're going to get it. I mean, how can they say no if we're checking our 
boxes. I love that. And taking care of us. I love that. Because if we are packaged the way they want us in that box, how can they say no? There you go. I'm going to say something about that, too. I, I was asked to speak on a panel during Women His, Women's History Month. And I accept it because I really, I really believe in what you just said. And, and I, so I accept it because I really wanted to hear some of that. I really wanted to bask in what you said. And one of the things, because whenever I, if I sit and if I accept to, 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 to share, I'm going to come with my truth. I talk about often being equal opportunity and accountability because even when we bring it within, healing that needs to be done within communities and that conversation of when you're trying to operate a business within the community or looking to your community to support when you're you're trying to operate coming out of or still trying to exist in trauma and all of that I mean there's just so much it is and that's where I think you know DEI does play a role because that's the understanding right understanding the trauma empathizing sympathizing right yeah. yeah, well, yeah. we are healthy enough to bring our best. You reflected, you internalized, mm-hmm. right? Right now is a good time to strategize, right? In construction, construction is uh, is quiet. It's dead season right now, the heart of winter. The next six weeks, businesses should be reflecting, not just the construction businesses, your products, your goods, your services, professional, technical. It's everybody should be reflecting the next six weeks to really figure out what's my game plan? Mm -hmm. How can I improve self? How can I improve business? Who's my next chase? Who's my next opportunity? You know, where are my threats? These are just business practices. You know, there's there's organizations like Mackey Company that can fine tune processes and procedures Mm -hmm. that can do the positioning and help with the procurement process and and, and understanding all of that stuff. I've dealt with over 1,500 entrepreneurs and I ensure that the first thing that I do for them is for them to understand what it is they're offering and why they're offering it. What is their passion? Because you can have all the passion in the world, but if you don't have a strategy behind it, you're not gonna monetize it. And I'll tell you this, and I'm gonna say it, I don't fear monetizing anymore. When you grow up as I did, and it's about community, and it's about the activism, it's about culture and history and all that, I didn't learn all that. And I didn't understand what you just said. I don't fear that anymore. I I get it now. So right now I understand, I have to build a team, I have to, there's so much. I, I don't fear that anymore. I will stand up on the tallest building and scream out, I need, hey, help. I don't fear that anymore. Yeah, I think there's a whole lot, there's still a whole lot that Soul Touch can give that I want to give. I have a wonderful husband who said, well, you want to just turn, let it all go. I'll support you to do the doll, the soulful dolls, which could be cool, but I'm not ready to, I got some pretty cool stuff on uh, on the plate, you know, I want to see happen. Yeah. Uh, I some film projects I want to do. I want to, you know, Uncle Gordon, who did everything, baby, you can do it all. I do it all. <laughs> <You know? laughs> I love it. But, um, yeah, So, but I do. I'm ready to call upon But that piece you just said, it's not an evil thing. Yeah. Mama used to say this before she passed. I said, Mama, I'm going to not volunteer as much. I'm going to come off of some of these boards. And she, she couldn't speak. She, she couldn't speak. A lot. I mean, she was really difficult for her to say anything. But she spoke when she wanted to, to, to. She told her dear friend, Dr. Josie Johnson, Josie, we still have so much work to do. We made that the theme of her home going. We still have so much work to do. But when I told her I was coming off some of the boards I was on, she said, yes, make the money. I know we want to help everybody. I've been in so many industries and the industries come at me and you know, hey, she she knows how to launch an auto body shop. She's mm. done lawyer firms, she's done products and lotions and soaps and sauces. Mm. She's she's done all these industries. Go talk to her. Mm-hmm. And yet folks know who and what I am and what I can do and I have a hard time saying no. You have a hard time saying no, but I think that there Meeting you, you helped me in a short period of time understand that there are things that I have in the soul touch 
camp. And there are products that I have that I can package and they can still be resourced and I can still be monetizing. If I have the right mentorship and the right team members, it is still a product of Soul Touch and I'm still not yeah. lo- losing myself in the process trying to deliver it. Your realm for Soul Touch is social enterprise. And you're using your your education, your network, your relationships to elevate the product line. Mm-hmm. So don't don't sorry, listen. Don't confuse opening up different types of businesses. Worry about how your existing services complement each other. Right. Because if they don't complement each other, it's going to take all your energy. You know, I think it's it's dawning on you. Mm-hmm. I need to have this team. The team. That's I need it. to have the team to execute A so I can focus on B. I can execute C and they can execute D. And that all falls under Soul Touch. That's exactly. Right. You your, nailed it. Your, your dolls have a story. Well, guess what? You are in media. You're used to creating stories. That's why it's a natural production and a compliment, right? Mm-hmm. The dolls themselves is your logo, your signature, your brand. But the story behind it is what links it to the Soul Touch mm-hmm. family of, of business. So that's what I think about, you know, when I think about entrepreneurs, because an entrepreneur is serial. An entrepreneur is one who wants to solve everything. And because they're in solution mode, they're gonna open up different companies. Oh, what if I do this? Oh, what if I do this? I'll start a roofing company, I'll start a plumbing company. And neither the two shall meet, because mm-hmm. they're two different line items mm-hmm. uh, and such. And I, and again, I'm very, very broad and, and, and non-specific, but it, it makes sense. And the advice that you give in terms of the processes that you're going through mm-hmm. is something that our listeners, our, our audience, our small businesses should consider. And with that, I simply want to thank Robin Hickman Winfield for being on our show today. Our conversation was definitely inspirational and really points to the importance of inner reflection, the values you hold dear, and how to take a stance on taking the opportunities presented and going at it with gusto. Next week, we host entrepreneur Foster Hackett of Advanced Design Contracting. This episode sheds a different light to construction and how firms can win. I also want to remind everyone that we do go live on our YouTube channel for open conversations and share your thoughts about our past episodes, procurement, hey, and even workforce. And while I'm at it, don't forget to smash that like button and comment or share. Finally, remember... Go after that low-hanging fruit, but don't forget to look up at the rest of the tree filled with ripening fruit. Until next time.